Hi, I'm Denisha Waters. I'm a student here at Liberty University, and this is for class uh, Historical and Philosophical Foundations of Education, which is EDUC uh, 703. My person that I have chosen is Jane Addams. Uh, her dates are from 1860 to 1935. I thoroughly enjoyed talking about Jane. Uh, I can identify with some of the things that she has done, and so I would like to share with you a little bit uh, about Ms. Jane Addams. A couple of things about Jane is that she was born in uh, Cedarville, Illinois in 1860. She was the eighth of nine children. Um, unfortunately, her mother died uh, when she was two years old. Her mother was in childbirth and she died uh, when Jane was two years old. And she started having a great uh, relationship with her father until her father uh, remarried. And that kind of separated uh, Jane and the father. The father was a very uh, local person with a high political uh, career. He was a leader in the community uh, where he served for 16 years as a state senator and he was also a great friend of Abraham Lincoln's. Uh, Jane went to college. Uh, she went to Rockford Seminary and uh, she was the valedictorian of her class and so she did very well. Uh, the people really respected her but I must tell you there were only 18 people in the class but she still did very well. Uh, when she went, originally she studied medicine, but Jane had uh, a couple of medical problems uh, with her spine, and so uh, she didn't continue with that. She had poor health, so she didn't continue in the medicine field. At age 27, uh, Jane and her friend, which her name was Ellen uh, Starr, uh, they visited London, and they went to a settlement house, and this is very important because this is where uh, things started happening for Jane. They visited a settlement house, in uh, Tony B. Hall in London, and it was there that that particular place changed Jane's life. She got excited and she finally realized what she was called to do. And so we're gonna take up from there. So that was when Jane was 27 years old. She goes there and she goes to Chicago and there she finds the Hull House, which is what Jane is actually known for, uh, the Hull House. This great place was not only for the wealthy, but Jane decided that it was great for immigrants and for people of color, for those that were poor. And so this particular establishment were open to all people. In that house, there was kindergarten, a daycare to play, uh, be able to help uh, the people that were going to work. Uh, there was also uh, an employment bureau. They would actually have businesses come and work with Jane on what was needed uh, for that. They had an art gallery there. They had a coffee house. Uh, they had a circulating library where people would come from all over just to look at the books that Jane had available for the people that were at the Hull House. They also had an art studio. Uh, they had a music school. And then they had a drama group that would meet. The great thing about this uh, Hull House is that not only did they operate during the day, but they had things at night so that they would be able to, the people would be able to take care of children. And so this great whole house did not only uh, work for the adults, but it was there for the children as well. Uh, they had English classes, they had citizenship classes. And so Jane really was very proactive uh, for those immigrants. She went to the school board to say, hey, their culture is very important and therefore you should implement their culture into the daily curriculum. Of course, people didn't want to hear that, but Jane fought for the very end for these immigrants to come and be uh, have their culture implemented in that. Uh, she had more clubs, uh, she had more activities, people would come from all around. And this was founded in 1899, can you imagine, by her and her friend. Remember the year before, they had been in London. And so that's where they really got that idea from. And they really just built upon that. It was a great place. Let me share something about the whole house. On its second year, more than two thousand people had come to visit the whole house so that was very exciting as you can see um, this is actually what the whole house looked like at that time and this was just a picture of some of the children uh, that attended and as I said earlier it was not only for the children but it was also for the parents 
So that was a very good thing about the whole house. I want to share with you a little bit about the timeline of James so that you can just kind of understand where she came from and where she was going. I told you that she was born in Cedarville, Illinois, how she entered the Rockford uh, Female Seminary. Uh, in 1888 is when she visited London. Uh, 1889 is when she actually founded uh, the Hull House. But then there's some great things that she did after she uh, invented or, or helped to establish the Hull House. In 19, in 18, I'm sorry, 1894, she helped to found the Chicago Federation of Settlements. And then in 1903, she became the vice president of the National Women's Trade Union League. Uh, in 1905, uh, she served also as one of the founding members of the Chicago Board of Education. And she did that from 1905 to 1909. And then also in 1909, uh, she helped to establish, which is something very important to me, uh, the National Association for the Advancement of Color People, uh, the NAACP. So she was helping as one of the founding members in 1909 for that. So as you can see, Jane was very, very busy doing a great thing. In 1910, um, she published her first book, which was called 20 Years of the Hull House, at the Hull House. And she also, at that same year, received the first honorary uh, degree awarded to a woman by Yale University. So she wrote a book and she's awarded this great uh, degree by Yale University. In 1913, she attends a conference and um, for the Congress of International Women's Suffrage Alliance uh, in Budapest, Hungary. And so she was busy going overseas as well. So not only is she taking care of things at the Hull House, she's doing international things. In 1915, uh, she helps to organize uh, the Women's Peace Party. And she's elected as the first chairman of that party. And that was in 1915. In 1919, uh, she's also helping to find the Women's International League for Peace and freedom. And she served as the president there from 1919 to 1929. So 10 years of being the president of that great organization. Then in 1920, uh, she's one of the founding members of the American Civil Liberties Union. So she's, she's still doing great things. 1928, uh, she presides over the conference of the uh, Pan Pacific Women's Union in Hawaii. She still has the whole house going on. And in 1931, she's the first American recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. And so uh, I'm thinking first American woman, that is, uh, to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. And so, you know, uh, that's important to me because I'm a woman. And so that, that was very exciting. Uh, but in 1935, uh, Jane gets sick. She dies in the hospital in Chicago and she's also buried in Illinois. And so I'm showing you the timeline. Not only did Jane do things uh, in Chicago, she was very influential in the international market as well. But then after she died, something great happened. Uh, it was in 1940 that Jane Addams uh, got a postage stamp. And so even though she died, she was awarded this postal stamp. And I thought this was very uh, significant that she was awarded this postal stamp. So Jane has done quite a few things. She has been uh, not only a woman to help uh, the immigrants, uh, people of color, uh, poor people, but she did things international. And I was so excited about that. I wanna close to tell you uh, about Jane. As you can see from this great slide here, she did so many things. She was a philosopher. She was a multicultural educator. She was a Nobel, a Nobel uh, Peace Prize uh, winner. She was a social worker. Uh, she was doing a part of women's suffrage and she was an author. I can identify with Jane because I think she did great things. My job, uh, I deal as a school liaison officer for the Department of Defense. Um, I'm also not quote a school teacher, but I'm affecting not only the lives of children, but also those uh, members in the military and their families. Thank you. Have a great day. And my name is Venetia Waters. Goodbye.